All right, let's get into Friday feedback. If you want to email in to be featured on the show, it's info at davidpackman.com. Of course, YouTube comments, TikTok replies, other stuff will sometimes be featured. Here's something kind of funny. So I was on the Piers Morgan show recently. A lot of people wrote in and said, David, this is not worth doing. Do not do it again. It's a complete and total waste of time. Here's something funny that is going on. There is now a cottage industry of, I guess I would describe it as AI type, AI type video content that is just on both sides of the aisle. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I mean. So one video reacting to my appearance with Dave Rubin on Piers Morgan says, get the fuck off my show. David Pakman shuts down MAGA stooge Dave Rubin in one reply. Got it. And then there's also a competing channel which did a video about the exact same thing called Shut Up Bitch, This Shit Goes Bad, Woke David Pakman Destroyed by Entire Panel on Live TV for Unhinged Take. I would not be shocked that both of these videos were made by the same content creator. This seems to be a really big thing now. There's these YouTube channels that just play up controversy essentially from other channels or shows or whatever. And um, hopefully they're making some money off of this. It seems like you can really generate a lot of content this way. But more substantively, here's a comment about the appearance with peers. Peers, this is Mr. Desotels, Desotels. Peers's show consists of him asking loaded questions getting mad at the answers, then crying victim whenever his own crap logic is used against him. Every time I don't know how he still has a show. Well, I can tell you how. Piers has a team around him and I've seen it happen where they will assemble these panels to generate as much drama as possible. And I have to hand it to them. They do it right. I mean, they put me up there with Dave Rubin. Um, Dave Rubin says things that I think aren't true in Rubin's defense. I say things that I'm sure he thinks aren't true. He resorts to ad hominems. I don't, but I res resort to smugness apparently, and it explodes. And I've seen them replace people on these panels, even at the last second, if they get a whiff that it might generate more drama. So I don't know. I, I was talking to Brian Tyler Cohen and other people about, about the peers show. And I said to them, I don't know that I want to keep doing it because it's so frustrating and they make you connect 15 minutes before it starts. Sometimes they'll make you sit there while they interject an additional interview. And I'm just, you know, sitting here. It's just a lot of time commitment. Obviously, they don't pay. But if it generated interesting discussions, it might be worth it. But is this really the best use of my time right now? So my question to you, should I continue doing the Piers Morgan appearances? That's my question to you. OK, from the subreddit, this is a huge wall of text. I'm going to summarize it. Don't worry. User Wegman's Groceries wrote, Gavin Newsom is a horrible choice to be the Democratic candidate in 2028. And they write, I'm seeing a ton of people saying Gavin Newsom should be the candidate in 2028. Their justification is he matches Trump's evil energy, is physically attractive and has the experience to do the job. I've not seen another potential candidate floated as much as I have Newsom. He says, have you learned absolutely effing nothing from this election and 2016? Democrats lost big with working class voters this year. You must have the weakest political instincts ever if your suggestion is to nominate the right wing's personification of a coastal elitist. At most, Newsom would help us win a sliver of the white female voting bloc because he's nice to look at and speaks well and goes on to say, Newsom is the absolute worst idea. California's successes don't matter. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. And then I want to go to the last paragraph, which is interesting. Lots of people commenting point out Trump is also a coastal elite. In 2016, he did not have a political record to defend because it did not exist. By 2020, Trump was a cult leader, so his record didn't matter. Gavin Newsom has had decades in public service. There are millions of things to pick apart. He's also not a cult leader. Please think critically. I am going to reserve judgment on this for the time being, and I want to hear from you. Is Wegman's groceries 
Right. And to be clear, that's not the Wegmans grocery chain. It's just a, a person on Reddit named Wegmans groceries. Is this person correct? That there could be no worse choice than Gavin Newsom for the Democratic nomination in 2028. Or is this person wrong? Email info at davidpackman.com. Newsom should be the subject line. We'll cut, uh, we'll, we'll put together, collate, I guess I mean, some of the responses and do a follow up. Okay, we did a poll on our YouTube channel. Should Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor retire? 58,000 of you voted. 75% said no, she should not retire. 25% said yes, she should. For those who haven't been following, it is now a possibility that after Joe Biden leaves office, you could have four years of Donald Trump. And then even if you get a Democrat back in the White House in 2029, you might not have a Republican Senate. And the point is, there may not be an opportunity to replace Sonia Sotomayor with a left leaning justice for a decade or who knows how long. And so some have been calling for her to retire um, based on her age and how old she would be in 2028 and in 2032. Three quarters of my audience says, no, she should not. And, you know, instinctively, it feels like she should not. Although mathematically, I understand the case for her retirement. Um, it is a less obvious case than that with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, for sure. But I but I do understand the case. The audience has spoken and they say she should not retire. Owen loves butters wrote on YouTube. Kamala did almost everything right. The key piece of the puzzle puzzle that was missing was economic populism. When it comes to things, Democrats in general need to do better. That's one of them. But we also need to stop ceding ground to Republicans. We keep letting them control the narrative on everything. We also need to give up the whole when they go low, we go high stuff. We need to be as ruthless as them. And perhaps most importantly of all, we need to promote the building of a left wing media ecosystem that rivals what they have on the right. It's not just Fox News. It's an intricate web spanning all forms of media. Yeah, you know, we've now had a bunch of different debates and conversations about the economic populism. It's you could believe. Let me see how I want. I want to be clear. You could do an economic populist message to your advantage. But if the economic populist message doesn't make people believe the economy is good right now, which a lot of people didn't, it still becomes an election that's a referendum on the perception of the economy. And as I pointed out many times, unemployment was low, GDP growth has been good, stock record, stock market record after stock market record. By all economic indicators, the economy was good, but it didn't matter because enough people did not experience it or believe it to be. And so in the same way, if you use a more economically populist message, but people don't believe the economy is good right now and you are already in power either <clears throat> directly or because you're the vice president, if people don't believe it, they're still not going to vote for you. So there's, there's sort of a couple different aspects to that. Boney Bolito wrote on Reddit. Anyone else just sort of numb or gallows laughing at this point? I spent the last 10 years paying attention to and getting anxiety from this stuff. I believe that at its core, Trumpism was a disease latched onto the American dream that even if Trump won or won again, it wouldn't be because the majority of America at its core wanted it or was complacent with it. It would be because of the Electoral College or voter fraud, suppression or a coup. But as Michael Waldman at the Brennan Center put it, Voters did this with eyes wide open. Somehow Trumpism became the American dream itself. So when I see news like Matt Gates being selected as AG, I laugh, not because I think it's funny. It's not, but because I feel like I have no other response left within me than to just laugh at the absurdity of it all. Can anyone relate? Well, many people I know can relate. Over the weekend, I was chatting with a bunch of my friends and they said, you know, I just laugh right now. I see tool CDNI and she seems to prefer Russia over the US. And I just I laugh. I laugh to avoid crying. So I get it. And similar message came from Guitar Goddess, who said, I can't watch the videos right now. From David to Jesse to Farron, the videos all seem like too much right now. I'm not unsubscribing. I'm just tuning out. 
I'm prioritizing taking care of myself and being reminded of the horror that awaits us is not helping. Appreciate your hard work, David. I'll be back. Well, guitar goddess, we will be here anxiously, anxiously waiting for you. Dynamic photography on YouTube said, hey, clowns, do you want to do better in the 2028 presidential election? Figure out what a woman is. Mic drop. This is very dumb because that simply was not an issue in this election. Is it Kamala Harris wasn't talking about it. However much right wing podcasters want to say, oh, they don't even know what a woman is. It wasn't an issue in the campaign and it did not rank as an issue in opinion polling about what issues do people care about. So they can repeat this all they want. They can say it was about woke. It was about trans sports. It just wasn't. You can't find any empirical basis to make that claim. Finally, Wood E says on the subreddit, fool America once, shame on Trump, fool America twice, shame on America. I think the main thing I'm feeling is disappointment in my fellow Americans because it was a loss by popular vote. Like 2016, Trump running and winning via electoral college on a populist lie can be forgiven if folks had learned a single thing from it. Yeah, you know, I never wish harm upon people. I, I just, it's not my nature. But as I said earlier this week, I am very much done with the level of empathy I was feeling for the people who vote Trump and then they get screwed. At some point, the right likes to say, it's personal responsibility. You're going to have to suffer the consequences of your actions. And some people are going to have to suffer. They voted for it. They fell for it again and they are going to suffer. The tragic part is a lot of people who didn't vote for it are also going to suffer. And that's a really sad thing. Info at davidpackman.com. Follow me on blue sky, davidpackman.com slash blue sky. I will see you on the bonus show. Well, I wrote a book after a long journey and a ton of work. I am really thrilled with how it turned out, and I hope you'll read it. The book is called The Echo Machine, and in a nutshell, it looks at how American politics got so broken, who has already figured out solutions and how we can try to fix it and stop the terror of Trump for the next four years with Trump winning this election. The echo machine couldn't be more relevant, not only a warning about how we got here, but also about what might be coming and how to prevent the worst outcomes. We've got to stay engaged. We need a plan. And that's what the book is about. There's a belief out there that unless you have corporate media behind you, you can't have a successful political book launch, that it's not possible. I think we can prove that wrong. Order the echo machine today at davidpackman.com slash echo on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Audible, Kindle, anywhere that books, ebooks and audio books are sold. You can also call any local bookstore and say, please order me the echo machine by David Pakman. Wherever you get the book, you'll get the free pre-order perks, including the signed book plate. Head to davidpackman.com slash free book stuff after ordering.